Hello everyone. Today I'd like to introduce the Tuna Metapack 1.1 version update. Let's take a look at the newly added features of MeshWarp. A cartoon template has been added to the MeshWarp feature. Additionally, we've fixed a few UI bugs related to tool tips. Let's go ahead and import the cartoon template. First, I'll adjust the color settings in Maya 2024 to fix some color issues. Since this is a problem specific to Maya 2024, if you notice any strange colors, you can follow the settings I'm about to show you. I'll change the color space to legacy and lower the light intensity in the viewport renderer. Now in previous versions, many of you likely had difficulties applying the base textures and shaders for MetaHuman. As you can see in this scene, all the file paths are broken, which is why the MetaHuman shader, like the DirectX shader, isn't functioning properly. Let's go ahead and click this button with the two arrows. In the first point one version, we've added a feature that simplifies the process of fixing file path issues in the templates imported via MeshWarp. When you first install version 1.1, the shaders and textures will automatically be installed into the default workspace path within your Maya folder located in your documents. This feature automatically adjusts the workspace to match your default Maya project settings, resolving any file path issues without manual intervention. As you saw earlier, we've added a cartoon character template to the tool, and the same goes for the body mesh. The structure remains identical to the previous MetaHuman based templates. If you're looking to turn a cartoon character into a MetaHuman, these new templates would obviously be a better choice than the older ones, right? Now let's take a look at the updated features of the MetaHuman set tool. Just like MeshWarp, the MetaHuman set tool also includes a cartoon character rigging template. The rigging is correctly set up, as I demonstrated in a previous tutorial. So, when you want to rig a cartoon character's body, you can use this new template. The structure is the same as the previous templates. Let's quickly load a tutorial character and set it up. If you're not familiar with the setup process, feel free to check out the previous tutorials. Now, let's try using the auto matching feature. Since the types are similar, the accuracy is much higher. One more thing we've updated. The items checked in the reference object list window are now automatically saved. Now, even after completely closing and reopening the tool, it will accurately remember and load the last checked items in the list. Since the settings are saved directly in the current scene, there's no need to save them separately as a JSON file making it much more convenient. Next, let's align the axes, reset the rotation, set the current pose as the initial value, and finally load the skin. When loading the skin, don't forget that the mesh name must match the name in the XML file. If your mesh differs significantly from the template, you may need to make many adjustments, as I showed in previous tutorials. But if the mesh is similar to the template, the rigging process will be much faster. We've also added up vector arrow markers for all templates. This makes it easier to identify and adjust the up vectors without confusion. Let's configure the axis visibility and run a quick test. As I explained in the previous session, the up vector determines the direction of the joint axis. Make sure to use it alongside the all joint axis align feature for optimal results. So far, the updates have been pretty bordering, right? Now, we're getting to the really exciting part. Wouldn't you like to add your own character setup files to the template? In this 1.1 version, you can register your character setup files into the MetaHuman set template. Let's hover over the Save button next to the Finger button. The tooltip explains that it allows you to save the current scene's data 
as a template. Let's go ahead and click the button. A message appears, notifying us that the current scene will automatically be adjusted into template format. So it's recommended to save the scene beforehand. I'll click yes. After a brief process, the file save window pops up. This is the path where the meta human set templates are stored. You can now save your file with any name you prefer. Now, let's remove all the unnecessary meshes that we don't need for this template. I'll go ahead and delete the extra meshes I used for this project. As you can see, the remaining structure is very similar to the template we initially imported. Oh, and I'll delete these shoes since we won't be using them. This template save feature automatically adjusts the names and structure of your finalized rigged meshes to match the template format. If there were head rigging, it would also be removed automatically. However, to fully utilize this feature, you need to make sure that your mesh names and LOD settings are properly set as I explained in previous tutorials. I assume most of you have already done this correctly since it's necessary for using the auto skin load feature. Let's organize a few things a bit more. First, let's clean up all the unnecessary nodes. Next, I'll delete all the unneeded head constraint sets related to the head. However, do not delete the scale matrix constraint set as it is crucial for the rigging structure to function properly. The scale matrix constraint set connects the driver skeleton and driven skeleton of the body. It's essential for the rigging process, so please do not modify or delete it. With everything cleaned up, we can now simply hit save and the file will be saved in the template directory. Now, we can see that our recently saved template isn't visible yet. Let's go ahead and hit refresh, and then it should appear. I will now open a new scene and test to ensure that this template functions properly. For this test, I'll make some random modifications to this combined LOD zero mesh and set it up. This time, I won't use a symmetrical model. I'll also make sure to turn off the mirror option. Let's align all the axes of the body joints. Reset the rotation values. Set the current pose as the initial pose. And finally, load the skin properly. Now, everything is working perfectly, right? If you have a character that you've preset, saving it as a template and applying it to similar types of characters will make the process faster and more efficient. Now let's share the updates regarding the Ultimate DNA Editor. Since we've added a cartoon template, it makes sense to also include cartoon DNA. The DNA-related template files are located in the data folder within the tuna rig folder in your documents folder. You can load them into the DNA viewer based on the path you see on the screen. As mentioned earlier, when you install version 1.1, all templates are automatically set up in the user's account folder. This means that all templates will now be managed based on your local account moving forward. Just like the body rig template, we've also prepared the DNA files for you. These templates have already undergone a polishing process for overall motion making them helpful for characters similar to this cartoon type. Now, let's load this DNA file into the DNA editor. I'll bring in a character from a previous tutorial to demonstrate the transfer process. You might notice a slight change in the UI as a new feature has been added here. First, let's set the output path and then proceed with the transfer.
let me show you the newly added mirror joints feature in the transfer tab. After you complete the transfer, you can use this feature to mirror all the facial joints of the current character based on their initial values. When the mirroring is in progress, it automatically sets the skin to off mode. To help users keep track of this, we've also improved the skin on and off functionality. Let's go ahead and click the button. It prompts us to confirm whether the current model is symmetrical. Since our model is indeed symmetrical, I'll proceed. Did you see how the right side has been corrected? If the button turns red, it indicates that the current scene is in the skin off state, even for a symmetrical character. After the initial transfer, there might still be slight misalignments in the joint placements on both sides. This feature is designed to recalibrate those joints accurately. That's how you can use the mirror joints feature. Now, for the highlight of today's updates, I'll reveal one more crucial functionality. Users who have used the mirror logic feature from previous tutorials might already be familiar with it. However, in version 1.0, it was not possible to use the mirror logic for non-symmetrical models. Now, to demonstrate, I'll make some arbitrary changes to the action of closing the right eye. Now, as you can see on the screen, let's assume the right eye blink action isn't properly closing the right eye. Users who worked with version 1.0 would know that trying to run the mirror logic on a non-symmetrical model would force the right side joints to mirror, leading to skin issues. To prevent this situation, we've added two options to this feature. Absolute mode behaves like what previous users experienced, but offset mode will maintain the model's initial pose as much as possible while performing the mirror. Let me show you how it works. As you can see now, the eye closes correctly while maintaining the original form. Let's save the DNA and check it again to confirm. Yes, the eye is closing properly. Now, let's try absolute mode. As you can see, the entire right eye has been forced upward, ignoring the initial position. Do you see how it completely disregards the starting position and just mirrors the movement forcefully? Let's switch back to offset mode. Now, based on the original position, the offset is maintained and the eye closes correctly. Unless you're dealing with a very special case, you should always proceed with offset mode, whether your model is symmetrical or not. So, what are these special cases? If your character has balanced symmetry between the left and right, but the right eye is initially half closed while the left eye is fully open, then you would need to use absolute mode for the eye closing action. Other than that, you should stick to offset mode. Let me introduce another feature. The clear selected logic function. This feature completely wipes out all joint movement data tied to the currently selected logic. As stated here, it only works on the joints that are currently selected. If you select just the logic item and click it, you'll get an error message asking you to select a joint. You can either manually select the joint you want to clear or select the associated logic item, which will automatically select all the relevant joints. When you click this button, it will ask you for confirmation, whether you really want to proceed. Once confirmed, all the joint movement information tied to that logic will be erased, so you'll need to be cautious. This function is primarily used in very specific situations, often to prevent interference between multiple PSD logics that overlap. So be mindful not to use it casually. Once again, remember that this function clears all joint movement data related to the selected rig logic. Be sure to use it carefully. After all joint movement data has been cleared, only the blend shape data remains, right? Now, I'm gonna delete the blend shape data as well. First, copy the default mesh with no movement. Then, select the related blend shape item, uncheck the invert shape option, and press change blend shape. Now, as you can see, the blend shape no longer moves. Remember, when you uncheck the invert shape box and proceed, you are replacing the current morph without recalculating the current mesh state like joints movement information. 
Now I'm going to mirror the right lip movement based on the left lips movement again. Let's try it with absolute mode. As I explained earlier, it forcibly mirrors the movement like this. If this model were symmetrical and you had performed mirror joints during the initial transfer, it would have been fine to use absolute mode. However, the current model is neither symmetrical nor are the initial joint states symmetrical, right? Now let's try again using offset mode. Yes, as expected, the movement reflects the offset while maintaining the initial state. All right, this is how you can proceed with the mirror logic. Now that we've covered all the updates for version 1.1, I'll share a few tips for setting things up. And let me show you a quick tip for setting up your character in Unreal. After you've set up your character and imported it into the engine, you might notice that some characters exhibit this kind of jittering or popping issue. In previous tutorials, we considered this to be just a minor bug, but since the issue has become more frequent and severe, I'll show you how to resolve it properly. All right, let's open the character's blueprint. First, select the face skeletal mesh and search for bounds in the details panel. Here, enable the option Use Attach Parent Bound so that the head follows the bound scale values of its parent, the body. Next, go to the body section. Here, make sure to check Include Component Location into Bounds. This option will include the current location of the body at the level into its bounds. Now, let's compile and check if the issue persists. It seems like the issue is still happening, though it's less severe. This is likely occurring because the character's bounds are being recalculated whenever the face moves out of the bound scale based on the camera's position. Since we've already set the face to follow the body's bound, let's now slightly increase the bound scale value for the body. This should help prevent the face from moving outside of the recalculated bounds. All right, the issue is now resolved. Consider this more of a simple tip from us rather than an official update. That concludes the update notes for Tuna Metapack 1.1 version. I imagine many users still find it difficult to convert their characters into metahuman. Our goal is to make our tool cover everything from the most basic steps to the more advanced processes. We also plan to update all aspects where users might encounter difficulties while using our tool. This process includes updates for automating several steps in the workflow. Please continue to support us. Thank you for watching.